let's dive into your career journey sure. so uh, like looking at your career journey you started like after our college mm-hmm. uh, you jo- joined target as a software developer right and uh, moving on you moved into an sre role and mm-hmm. the last job that you were doing you were earning around 50 lakhs or something right so uh, moving on to from a just a starter software as the one to into a uh, so high paying sre role mm-hmm. uh, just almost 3 4 years like what it's a it's a crazy career journey that would inspire a lot of yeah people yeah. So yeah. yeah, so just walk us through like how did you switch into SRE and all sure, that. Sure, sure. So so I'll just start from my journey at Target, right? So as you mentioned, like yes. from college, we uh like I joined Target as a SD one. So once I was there, uh, what I realized is that I was working on the back end side of things. So Target, as you know, is a Walmart competitor, right? Yes. So it has a lot of stores, like it has eighteen hundred plus stores. Okay, so I used to I, I was working in the uh, store backend team. So basically, there are transactions that happen on the store. Okay, my uh, backend code used to handle those transactions. Is what I was working on. Uh, then, like after a year, what we realized is that that was kind of fixed, and you don't tamper with something which is already working great, right? Okay. So what we decided as a group, like my team there, is that we'll move more to the platform side. Because like there was a lot of innovations happening happening on the platform side of things at that time. Because uh, what Target decided is that they'll move away from AWS. Because mm-hmm. Amazon is one of the competitors for Target. So they decided that they'll move away from AWS cloud to their own cloud. right? So that is why they decided that they'll create their own platform. And there were a lot of uh, like development happening on the platform team. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like we got an opportunity of moving into the platform team. And that is where I got my first exposure as a DevOps SRE engineer, right? Oh. So, uh, so, so during that time, like what we used to, used to work on is that we were one of the earliest, uh, earliest teams to adopt Kubernetes, which is one of, a, uh, one of the new technologies into target. And, and like this, this is something around 2017, right? So Kubernetes was relatively very new then, like even a lot of new companies right now don't adopt Kubernetes because it is a very uh, new concept. So mm-hmm. got the chance to work in Kubernetes. And once I got that, right, like once I got that exposure into Kubernetes, that opened up a, a, a lot of variety of uh, opportunities for me. Because mm-hmm. you were one of the few people who, who had an exposure on, on uh, that technology. Mm-hmm. So um, because of that, what happened is that once I started looking out for a, a role, right? So I, I had multiple uh, interviews lined up every time and 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 it was really easy for me to get selected because of my knowledge in that stack right so what i did to in order to uh, prepare for the sre role is right uh, that i knew the kubernetes side of things but there are like six seven other topics which i needed to prepare so i for that and then i decided to give give interviews so that is where my uh, second opportunity which is that mo engage came up so yeah. Moving is if you compare it with target is fairly low at scale, right? Mm-hmm. With, uh, because it's a, it's a startup, right? Mm-hmm. So, so once you're going into a, a startup, you're, uh, mm-hmm. like you always get that, uh, chance to architect stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So you get to, uh, solve a particular problem, which is very important and dear to the company, mm-hmm. right? So I was given that opportunity at moving So I, I took up like, uh, two or three big projects, which mm-hmm. is. So sorry to just break you off. So what exactly was your timeline? So you said that you actually worked in target on Kubernetes and in the platform team. So how much time did it take to you for like switching into Moeng age or preparing for it or something like that? Yeah. So, so for me, like I was, I was working on Kubernetes for, so I, I was in target for two years. Right. Mm-hmm. And I worked on the Kubernetes stuff for the last eight months. Uh, during that time. And then once I was comfortable in Kubernetes, I decided to look towards SRE roles. So Mm -hmm. I started applying, I started looking out for stuff and I started getting opportunities. So it took me roughly one and a half to two months to, uh, prepare for 
like other interviews like that was when the moment i decided ki, yes I, I can take up uh, interviews now mm -hmm. so yeah so I, i took that one and a half to two months ka gap and then, then i decided that i'll give uh, interviews okay. now so, so if, I, if i understand correctly and summarize mm -hmm. it's basically because you have been working on those set mm -hmm. of technologies for eight months mm -hmm. easier for you you just had to learn Correct. few yeah. other technologies around it in one two months and then you started applying for sri yeah, yeah. that that was definitely the case so for me like what was uh, majorly missing is the aws exposure because what was happening is the target was moving away from aws right mm -hmm. and other companies are mostly on aws so mm -hmm. what i had to cover during that month was the aws side of things like how amazon web services work right mm -hmm. so i did that in my stretch goal of two months and then then uh, i decided that i can take up interviews okay. so uh, so yeah like that was the journey and yeah so now uh, once once coming to moenge as, as i was saying right i got the opportunity to architect stuff so mm -hmm. i i completely uh, like took over the monitoring side of things first so basically this is setting up the entire monitoring stack for moenge right mm -hmm. so every bit of metrics that uh, that like the moenge engineers used to track their code or track how reliable their code is that mm -hmm. was the uh, setup section that was given to me right so that was one of the big projects which like lasted for 8 8 to 9 months in moenge mm -hmm. and the my next big project was around databases so this was basically uh, trying to make our mongodb cluster which is their primary uh, database more reliable so mm -hmm. so yeah like my work there was something around 8 to 9 months where i kind of figured out why like the mongodb uh, was not reliable and and what all things we could have in, in, uh, improved so i i worked very closely with the database engineers there at moenge in order to uh, kind of achieve this so yeah so that is that is during my like that is roughly my time at moenge right so so these were the two major projects which i worked on apart from yeah. major learning phase for you as an sre at moenge yes yes these are the two multiple uh, like these are the two uh, primary things i'd say that i uh, learned at moenge so what 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 happened is that after doing this right so mm -hmm. you kind of gain expertise in certain sections so uh, what what happened is for me monitoring was something which i was really comfortable in okay mm -hmm. and this was again a a, a new uh, tech stack in addition to the kubernetes which i knew right mm -hmm. so now now i i knew kubernetes and now i knew aws and now i knew monitoring so mm -hmm. these three for me were like very fundamental when i started looking out again uh, for my next opportunity okay mm -hmm. so this time around the the opportunity came from elsewhere right i was i was not technically looking out for opportunities but like once skyflow approached me right so they they wanted me to uh, become one of the uh they they starting engineers or like there were there were a team of like 10 10 20 people i guess roughly and mm -hmm. they uh me to be the first guy in the sre team so mm -hmm. that sounded very lucrative to me and i was i was working with great people like people who have just uh, like left their multi million dollar companies and and joined uh, skyflow in order to build something from scratch so this mm -hmm. is skyflow just has started around 6 months back and i got the opportunity to work in a company which is like just building up and it's entirely into tech right so once i was in skyflow then like like i got to choose from a variety of stuff which i could have worked on right mm -hmm. because everything was open for me to explore on so that is where i decided myself that i would take care of the uh, the deployment side of things okay so set up the entire deployment pipeline for skyflow uh, was was one of my uh, key projects and as an sre engineer what you tend to do is ki you tend to do it via code right mm -hmm. like how could you make the deployment or how could you make a a, a stack come up via code so that is where i got introduced to a lot of infrastructure as a code concepts right mm -hmm. like how do you bring up servers via code instead of provisioning it uh, manually so that is where i got a lot of exposure on other technologies and well uh, as well and and i did a couple of these big projects in in skyflow regarding the deployment side again on uh, monitoring side and i was also working with uh, uh, like a very uh, experienced team 
like I, I was the junior most guy there and, and and like other folks were from great companies like google linkedin who used to work there and they used to help me figure out stuff at scale right mm-hmm. because my exposure was more on the startup side their exposure was more on the scale side so they used to tell me problems which i could have faced at scale so that was a great le- learning experience um, on my end so mm-hmm. So yeah, like, like I guess that's that's the journey. Uh, to this guy. Amazing, yeah, it's great that you you learn. Basically, it's it's a classic example of learn by doing sort of thing. Right. Learning from peers and learning via projects. Yeah. yeah. So so this is this is the thing with SRE, right? So because you, uh, what you do is like you can only like there are 30, 40 tools which you can uh, learn. Okay. Mm. So like you can't pick up key, uh, like I'll study this or I'll study this particular section. So mm-hmm. only when the opportunity that you get to interact with it, that you learn that tool. So that mm-hmm. is why like, uh, like my, me, me hopping multiple companies gave me opportunity to work in uh, n number of tools and I got that exposure. So, uh, yeah, like, like, as you said.